so uh, your name, height, and weight, bud? All right, so my name is Travis Patton, 5'6", uh, and current average is around 176, 177, but hit two lows the last couple of days, 173, 175, so officially made way for the Classic Physique Division. Awesome, man. So go ahead, what shows are you getting ready for? Uh, first show is in two weeks. Uh, that's going to be the uh, Michigan State Championship show, and then the next show is going to be uh, NBC Junior National in uh, Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee. First national show, yep, awesome. yep, yep. Okay, uh, go ahead and tell people what you trained today, uh, the movements you did, mm -hmm. what you kind of like about each movement. Yep, so uh, today we did a little bit of a push day, majority chest. Uh, I actually like to switch it up between all the different uh, types of movements. So I try to do a barbell compound movement. Uh, I try to do a dumbbell fly as well, get a plate loaded uh, decline press, and then as well as um, doing the flies. Um, did it first off with incline, the work towards the top of the chest, and then we kind of did between a uh, incline and flat for some flies kind of move down towards the decline uh, on the plate loaded machine and then we hit both up high and down low for the cable making sure that we hit uh, just the whole full range of the chest uh, muscle and then we just finished off with some tricep. When you, were, um, when you were doing the movements I noticed too like even with the, uh, you know, the incline stuff or on the cables it seems like you're getting a lot of different angles and stuff you're rotating your wrists or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Is that going to explain the benefits of that? Yeah so I'm a very very big believer that uh, your your body is obviously uh, you know made up of its own skeleton, and the way that you move your body will actually determine the way that your body is shaped. So like if you're doing a, if you got two people that are doing a bench press, but the way that their wrists, their elbows, everything is positioned, that muscle is actually going to grow different or respond different based on how you're moving it. Um, so obviously nobody's perfect, nobody has a perfect physique, but you can do your, your best to try to be conscious and be uh, like educated on all the different spots on your body, uh, and make sure that you're hitting. Like, either different feet placement, different elbow placement, whatever the case for your movement is, just making sure that you're getting like the most uh, shape out of your muscle, essentially. So with like the incline, incline seated press, like I noticed you're kind of forward for the first few, and mm -hmm. then kind of went back for the just to hit the different yeah, primarily for that one, if my back is uh, pressed up against it, I don't get as much of a stretch, which I usually feel a little bit in my, in my shoulder, but because your chest and your shoulders muscles connected, you can't purely isolate it with that motion, so you do need to get a little bit in that, so that's why I lean forward a little bit with that motion. No, that mm -hmm. was very and cool. not a lot, you don't see a lot of guys. So. I always do what, not the machine is kind of saying what I do, but if I feel my body working in the way that it does it, and my my form or maybe the what I do might look a little bit more unorthodox to uh, like what would you see like in like a picture perfect situation uh, but it's really about your own body kind of understanding your own body and making sure that the movement that you're doing is getting you the, the results that you're looking for so and I didn't mean to interrupt you I'm sorry you were saying then you went into triceps and you did a bicep oh yeah yeah we just finished off with a little bit of arms uh, got like tricep extensions uh, push downs usually try to go higher reps with that just because uh, it's just like a single joint motion. You really don't need to stress it out too much. We're already doing a lot of pressing motions on our shoulder days, on our chest days. Uh, just kind of get a good burn going for both of them. Yeah. From two years ago, the last time you competed, you were doing mainly men's physique. You did some classic. Yeah. But uh, you did put on some good size. So I wanted to talk about that and uh, how you're feeling about coming back and that much increased weight. So. Yeah, so first show that I did was in 2019. It was the Powerhouse Classic. Um, kind of funny thing about that show, there was only one other person in both my classes for both Men's Physique and Classic. Uh, and I got I got second in Classic and first in, in Men's Physique. So you can either look at it like I got second or I got last, one of the two for Classic and Physique. So hopefully this year uh, I don't get last. Uh, you know, I, I feel really good about where I was at. Um, last uh, competition two and a half years ago, I weighed about 158 on stage, and right now you, I briefly told you what I weigh. So we're looking at about 12 to 14 pounds different in stage weight and much leaner than, than the first time around, which allows me to transition to like the classic physique division, uh, which is uh, the cap for, the, for that is 175 pounds for 5'6 to 5'7. So, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, now you recently you just started working with Dom again. How is that going for you? Yep, so Dom was actually my first coach. He kind of got me into uh, the, a little bit more in the bodybuilding bulking aspect of it after my show. 
Uh, and then I took some time off, uh, recomped back with him about 14 weeks out from the show and asked him if he would do my prep. Uh, he was more than happy to do it and I've been extremely happy the whole time. Uh, my energy level has been wonderful even uh, this close out to the show. I feel like he's very attentive uh, with like where my body's at. I'm constantly checking in with him. He's constantly monitoring it and making adjustments like daily um, at this point. So I couldn't be happier with his attention, the detail. Yeah, yeah he, he's done a great job with me. I think that we're right on track from the original game plan from when we set out to you know, where we're forecasted to be out now and it's just a matter of putting in the time and work. How many weeks uh, prep was this one? Uh, it started the first week of March, so I think in total it was about 14 weeks, which is, which is a sweet spot for me. Uh, I don't like to do much more than four months. I don't really get too out of shape in the off season to have to do anything longer than that. And I also don't want to do really much shorter than that because you're risking potential muscle loss uh, with, with such a short period of time. And you can burn out. Doing like and you can burn out. Yep. I know like the year with COVID, people like prepped and yeah. canceled and they prepped and got it. Was I was actually uh, one of those, but yeah. I didn't, I, I stopped it after the first cancel. Yeah, you're like, I got about eight weeks into my first prep and uh, I was like, you know what, I'll just recomp, hit it next year. And uh, it was a blessing that that happened because I don't think that I would have been in the same position uh, as I am now versus back then. That's so. Awesome. Maybe that's a year off you wouldn't have taken normally. Exactly. You would have been wanting to get right back. Ex exactly, yeah. So everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, how's cardio now. Uh, cardio is not too bad. It's uh, increased uh, within like a four day period. So we start off doing 200, 350, and then we do 400, 500. We get a break and then kind of restart the process. Obviously all that stuff can change based on my body composition, um, but it's really not too bad. We uh, hit uh, like a, a hit style uh, for like the first like 25% of it. And then the, rem the remaining is like a list, so like a low steady states. Um, you can do it on any type of cardio machine, as long as the cardio machine allows you to put in your body weight and uh, you see where the total calories burn shows your, your daily target. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you get into, obviously you want to buy now, but how did you get into about what kind of made you, I know you used to play football sure. in uh, Midland mm -hmm. back in the day. Like how do you start getting the lifting and then make advance and getting into a little more? Yep, so the first person that took me to the gym was my mom uh, because I told her that I wanted to get uh, bigger and stronger for football back in ninth grade. I wasn't really the biggest. I've always been about 5'6", even getting into high school. And I weighed about 130 to 155 at the most the whole time. So have been the biggest. So I found that the weight room was the best way for me to be able to gain size and gain strength to play football. It wasn't until maybe a couple years after, uh, around 22, 23, um, when I was just laying in bed one day and I started looking at old YouTube videos of all the guys in the 70s, the 80s, the Arnolds, the, you know, the Lee Priest, the, uh, just everybody. And I just looked at those guys and thought that they were you know, men and I was like, I wanna look like them. Yeah. So ever since then, I've just been kind of chasing the same, same look that they accomplished and uh if, if if i'm lucky enough i'll be able to do that one day so you really like that aesthetic that's what you're growing towards like the more classic yep sam your band is always talking about class without mass is 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 not good and I'm, I'm a big believer in that i think i think it's very easy the not easy but i think it's uh it takes a lot more detail to build the class aspect of it rather than just focusing straight on muscle building um, it's the kind of where the art and bodybuilding comes into play. I, you look at a lot of bodybuilders and you take just their body shots and you can't necessarily uh, distinguish between who's who. But back in the day, you didn't need to look at people's faces and say, oh, that's, this is that, this is that person. They had very unique body shapes. Uh, and, and that's something that I would like to see brought back into so open bodybuilding and classic. Thank you. Watching you pose and stuff, you know, back then too, especially they had different posing styles. You could tell guys just like, exactly. You, know, you could cut up the head or something. You see the pose, you'd be like, wow, you know, I know. Like mm -hmm. you said, Leo LeBron or that's. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know? Yeah, you got to have your own personality on it. It's you spend a lot of time in the weight room. You might as well, you know, find a find a nice way to be able to present the hard work that you that you did. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. um, friends, family, people you'd like to thank. Anyone? 
Whew, yeah, that probably goes a mile long. I, I mean, I guess first one is going to be my coach, Dom, probably because he spends the most amount of time uh, making sure that this prep goes uh, steady. Uh, so he's, he's been a great help. Uh, next would probably be my girlfriend uh, and my friend, my uh, one of my best friends, Tank. They've helped out my mental uh, state of mind throughout this whole time. I've had countless conversations with them, and if it wasn't for them keeping my head in the right place, I'm you know not 100% sure how I'd be feeling at this point. Um, all my family uh, for supporting me, making sure that if I need anything, um, you know, that they're available to help out and um, probably a whole lot of other friends that, that message me on Instagram. So you guys know who you are. I really appreciate everybody that's been out there and supporting me. Uh, it, it does feel like this is not, some, so not just something that I'm doing on my own. I really do feel like I have a lot of people behind me that want to see me do well. And, um, you know, when I think about it, it gets me emotional because I know that it means a lot to me, but it also means a lot to a lot of other people. So. Hey, man, my room for you from my hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Saginaw. The 989. Right here, yeah. the 989, man. <laughs> Definitely, we do not yeah. have a lot of uh, good athletes in Saginaw, so it's good to see someone. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to have a pro come out of Saginaw. It'd be awesome. Fingers crossed, man. Yep. Well, good luck, man. We'll definitely uh, follow up with you, and I hope everything goes well. Awesome. And bring back that car, man. This is going to need some more pros. Hell yeah. Sounds good. Awesome, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.